Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. Today we're going to talk about backing up your computer and most specifically backing up multiple drives to one hard drive. Uh, a lot of times it's easy to back up one drive to another drive but when you have um, one drive that's a big drive because today drives are pretty cheap. You can get three terabyte drives for a pretty reasonable price and a lot of times those drives are a lot bigger than the drives that we have inside our computers because we've you know been upgrading over time. And so there are times when you might want to back up two drives that you might have in your main computer to one drive that's an external drive. And how do you do that in such a way that it makes it work? Now traditional ways of doing that would be to partition the external drive into uh, two different segments depending on the size of your drive and that way they show up as separate drives and you can make that backup easily but there are times when you want to preserve the storage for instance if you've got a Drobo unit uh, where that drive uh, expands as you add more hard drives to it you might not want to partition your drive instead you might want to figure out a way to back up both drives to the Drobo but doing it on one big partition so that you don't have to limit the amount of space that you have for any particular backup so today we're gonna talk about how you can do that using a program called super duper so if we head on over to Safari super duper is created by a company called shirt pocket and so we'll go ahead and uh, go to the website there so you can take a look at it. It's at shirtpocket.com. And SuperDuper is a, is a backup program. Now, what SuperDuper does well is it allows you to make a clone of your internal hard drive so you could actually boot from an external drive so that if your internal drive goes bad you can uh, boot from an external drive and run your computer off of that as if the internal drive was working fine. But SuperDuper also allows you to do backups, copies of drives. It also allows you to schedule backups uh, if you buy the paid version. And as you can see here, the paid version is $27.95, and I would highly recommend it. It's a great investment. This is one of the simplest and most reliable backup uh, software packages that I've seen for the Macintosh, and it's a great one. So you just click Download and download the program and install it. And that's something that I've already, I've already done on our system so we'll take a look at how that works now now when you launch SuperDuper you get this little window that comes up and it's a very simple interface to begin to use on the left hand side here you're able to select which drive you want to copy so it's the drive that you're going to want to duplicate or the drive that you're going to want to back up and then on this other drop down you pick the drive that you're going to back up to now Normally, you would just pick you know, the drive that you want to back up and then pick one of the other drives you want to back up to, like a Drobo or something like that. Now, when you do that, however, uh, if you do it just for a drive to drive, that works fine and you can make that happen. But we're looking at how do you back up two drives to one drive. So we want to put two different hard drives. In my case, I'm going to put this server hard drive and my Macintosh hard drive too. I want to back those both up to this Drobo here. So what do I do now to make that happen? Do I do two separate backups or not? Well, in SuperDuper, what, what works really well is you can create what's called a disk image. Now, a disk image is basically a virtual drive that's created. And that virtual drive, you can determine the size, but the virtual drive will grow to the size of the content that you put into it. So that what happens is when you back up to it, SuperDuper will mount this drive, make a backup to it, and then unmount the drive. And so it's not a real hard drive, but it functions like a virtual hard drive. Now, the advantages of doing that is the fact that you can put multiple disk images on one hard drive, have backups go to those disk images because it sees the disk, the disk image as a hard drive, and those things can expand over time to the size of whatever it is that you're backing up into it. This allows me to take advantage of the Drobo so that I, if, if these disk images and everything else that I've put on the Drobo gets too big, I can just add more drives to the Drobo and expand and its storage capacity. Uh, it also keeps me from having to, to partition the drive up. It also allows me to store a whole bunch of other stuff on my Drobo alongside these disk images because they're self-contained. So it really is a, a good way to make that happen, a good way to go. Now one warning however, and that's this. You are, you are not able to boot your Macintosh off of a disk image. So the ability to create a bootable backup, which SuperDuper is able to do, uh, will not work if you're going to back up to a disk image. You can, however, still back up your hard drive to that disk image and then use that disk image to restore 
uh, that hard drive to another newer hard drive in case your hard drive crashes and then from that hard drive you'd be able to boot your Mac. So it's important to understand that you're not creating a bootable backup here you're simply creating a disk image. Okay now that we understand how SuperDuper works let's go ahead and make our backup. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna backup to a disk image and SuperDuper will create now this uh, saving uh, save screen to be able to save the disk image. So I'm just going to name it what my hard drive is so that I know exactly what I'm backing up to, what this disk image is all about. And you'll notice where it says image type. It'll say read only disk image, read write sparse bundle, or read write sparse image. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to do the read write sparse uh, image because you want to have a sparse disk image that you can set up and so that'll make it work for you. Just, just uh, choose where you want to save it and so in our case I want to save it on the Drobo and I want to save it on the top level uh, so that I can get access to it easily and I'm gonna click Save. And so now as you can see it's created this disk image now on my Drobo that it's ready to back up to. Now if I click the options here just to give you an idea for the different things that you can do under the options you have general and advanced options. You can do a repair disk image on the server before you copy it. Uh, you don't need to do that. It will take uh, more time. Uh, the other thing you can see down here it says during copy what it's going to do. And it says again erase the server hard drive then copy the files uh, from my main server hard drive over to this disk image server hard drive. It's written that way. Now if you look at this drop down however what I would recommend that you do is a smart update. What Smart Update does, and what I love about SuperDuper is it tells you right here in the text area what it's about to do and what it's going to do. But what the Smart Update does is it only updates, it does one major update to create a copy of your drive over to the Drobo in this disk image that we have. But the other great thing about it is that in the future when you make changes to your hard drive and it goes to back it up, it's only going to back up the things that have changed. It's not going to do a complete backup every single time because that would take a long time and just continue to write over. So it's a smart update. It, it takes into account the fact that there are changes and it looks for those changes and then makes sure that those are duplicated over on the disk image. And then on su successful completion you can do all kinds of different things. You could shut down your computer, you could quit super duper, all those kinds of things. I'm just going to say do nothing because once I schedule it, it's going to come on and off on its own and I don't have to worry about it. Under the advanced options, uh, there's a bunch of different things that you can run here, but I wouldn't worry about these unless you have some kind of specific thing that you want to do uh, that you need to run a script for or something like that. Now you'll notice now that I clicked OK and came back to this main screen it tells me in plain language everything that's going to happen and what it's going to do to backup and it says copy now. And once I click that button it's going to go ahead now and make an exact copy of my server hard drive over to the server hard drive disk image that I've created. Now notice the button that's schedule here. What I can do is I can schedule when I want my SuperDuper backups to record. And if I have multiple backups that I'm doing, it will start one backup and wait till it finishes before it starts the next. So it's kind of a nice feature to, to have that happen. I can have it copy uh, on different weeks of the month. I can have it copy on days. It's up to me on how I want to do that. I can even schedule the time on when I want it to start copying. And you'll notice as I click things on and off here, notice that the text down below changes depending on what I've added and what I've taken away. So if I just want to back up Monday through Friday, it'll say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it'll give me the time that it's actually going to do that, and I can schedule that backup. Once I click OK on the schedule, you'll see that it's starting to schedule the copy, and my next copy is right here. And it's going to copy on Friday at 9.30 in the evening, and it will do that automatically. The great thing about SuperDuper is the program can be closed. You don't have to leave it open, and it will do an automatic copy for you on the date and time that you've scheduled for it to happen, and then it will shut itself down once it's done. So that, that allows me to make that happen. Now, once I click the Copy Now button, it's going to start to copy over to um, my Drobo, and it will make an exact copy of my server hard drive. Okay, now to get the backup started, I simply just click the Copy Now button. It'll ask me for my password to make sure that it's something I really want to do. And it tells me that you're about to make a smart update of the server hard drive. And so you have another opportunity to opt out. I'm just going to say uh, copy. And it starts to go through the whole process. It prepares to copy the files. It's going to mount the server hard drive uh, disk image that I've prepared. It's going to prepare it. It's going to get it ready to go. And then it'll start to copy the files. Now when it's done, it's going to 
uh, tell me that it's done. It'll show the fact that the backup is completed after a successful copy. And then once this is done, then we can go and create another disk image for the other hard drive that I want to back up. And we'll see that we're able to put those onto the Drobo. They'll be sitting there side by side. And it creates the ability, again, to make those multiple bootable backups. Okay, now that we've got the first drive backed up, now we're going to do the second one. I'm going to back up my second drive, the Macintosh Hard Drive 2. And so I'm going to go create a disk image for this one as well. And that's, I'm going to call it the uh, Macintosh Hard Drive 2, again, uh, just to, uh, to keep consistency so I know which drive I've backed up. Again, we want to read write sparse image. We click Save. Uh, it's going to save that to the Drobo now. I'm going to go my, to my options real quick and make sure that I've got Smart Update checked off here. And I do, so I'm going to click OK. And then again, I'm going to click Copy Now. It's going to ask me to authenticate. Are you sure you want to do it? I'm going to say yes. And now it's going to start the process of creating this particular disk image on the Drobo. So when we're done on the other side, we'll take a look and I'll show you how those line up and you'll be in good shape. Okay, and once the record, once everything is done and the backups have taken place, we've got a screen here that shows that everything's okay. You can see that it copied the files, it made a successful copy, and we're all set. And if you look over in the finder over here, you can see there are my two disk images right there, and SuperDuper will mount those, and every time that you do the backup that you've scheduled already. So hopefully that was helpful for you to understand how to make these backups happen. And I'll come back next time with another screencast to help you figure out how to do new things on your Macintosh.